Sit back and relax, because today we are going to be talking about Warwick top lane, which is one of the more interesting strategies in League of Legends, not only for its innovation and odd changes that kind of made it this, this really exciting meta pick for a while, but on top of that, it was actually discovered and pioneered by the first professional League of Legends streamer which was really exciting to see. So let's jump right in. To tell this story properly, we have to talk about that streamer who was none other than the legendary Guardsman Bob. Guardsman Bob was a professional streamer in League's early years, its first number of seasons. And he was interesting because he was a streamer that was not a professional player, which was really weird. Nowadays, you might see plenty of people on Twitch TV and various streaming sites who are kind of similar to myself. Um, people who are not pros, who are not maybe the best at League of Legends or the highest rated, but who are able to get kind of decent viewership because they're entertaining, because you just, you know, you like the individual, the personality, or you enjoy just hanging out in their stream for whatever reason. But that was not really the case in League's early years. There was really one streaming site that most people were on, which was own3d.tv or owned TV, um, which eventually ended up going bankrupt. But before it did, it hosted most of the big league names Hotshot GG, St. Vicious, Big Fat LP or Big Fat GG, Chowster, Elements, uh, all of the streamers who were kind of um, making an effort to be a, a figurehead in the community and stream their games. They were really big and they were on this site that was paying them for a while at least. Um, but it, it was kind of interesting because all these players that I'm mentioning, they, they were pro players and, and they were kind of big streamers just because they were pros. You wanted to watch them because they were, you know, they were the best players in the world and you wanted to see their gameplay. You weren't really watching them for the stream quality or the entertainment factor, um, or at least in the sense that you didn't have Tyler ones out there. You didn't have Tyler ones or Yasuo's or, uh, you know, um, Tobias Fade, or like a lot of the people that you see nowadays have these really wild and crazy personalities, and that's kind of why they get really big on stream, in addition to maybe being fa fairly high rated. But back then, you only had pro players who were making an effort to stream, except for one guy who was Guardsman Bob. Guardsman Bob was kind of interesting because he was, as I mentioned, someone who was not a professional player. He was still very high rated, and he was high enough rated to a point where he was playing in games with all the pro players out there, but he was someone who was fairly successful successful at just streaming and being an entertaining streamer. He didn't really have the kind of, um, you know, he did, I don't believe that he ended up joining any pro teams or playing professionally for any period of time, but he was able to get thousands of viewers watching his stream just because he was an enjoyable person to watch and because he also put a pretty, pretty big emphasis on the polish of his stream. He had stuff that was, I mean, it, it was kind of innovative. I don't know if other pro players were doing this at the time, but he might have been the first people to do stuff like, or the first person to do stuff like, like have a song title and uh, artist that, that's up on screen so you can know what music is being played at all times while watching. I think he also had a chat overlay at, at the top of his stream, which, you know, that, that was something that was pretty advanced at the time. Not many people were trying to do stuff like that. Most of the streams were just the league gameplay and a webcam sometimes, and sometimes you didn't even have the webcam. So he was a little bit interesting in terms of him being able to stand out with that level of quality, but um, he, he wasn't all that popular until one one very big event, which was the Ionia versus Noxus rematch. In season one, there was a moment when, I, I don't know exactly how it happened, but in the lore, there was some big rematch between Ionia and Noxus, which are two of the regions in Runeterra, of course, two of the nations, and Riot decided that for this big thing that was happening in the lore, they were going to get streamers and, and members of the community to play it out. And then whatever team ended up winning, Ionia or Noxus, they would then have that victory occur in the lore. So what happened was there was this big event, it was called the Ionia versus Noxus rematch, where five, five players for Ionia and five players for Noxus played against each other in, I think it was just a best of one. The players could only play champions from that region. So Ionia could only play Ionian champions and Noxus could only play Noxian champions. And it was kind of interesting. It, it was a really fun show match series where whoever won, they would get RP, they would get IP. They would also get the triumphant skin, uh, the triumphant 
Elephant Rise skin, which was a big deal, um, giving that skin out to people who won tournaments in, in League's early years, and even today, I think. But maybe more excitingly than all of that, the winners would also get to choose to add a new item to League of Legends. Guardsman Bob ended up playing in this competition, and he ended up playing for Ionia. Um, Ionia would ban, I forget, I think Ionia banned Ramus, forcing a Scion jungle for Noxus, which was considered pretty bad at the time. And Ionia had a couple of different junglers that they were able to play with, uh, one of which was Udyr. And so Guardsman Bob, he was the jungler, he ended up playing Udyr, and he went off. He carried the heck out of Ionia. I mean, you might still be able to find the replay on YouTube somewhere, which if you do, I mean, I think his, his final score was something pretty insane. And he was kind of the reason Ionia was able to win, where Ionia, or the players of Ionia, they then got to vote on which item they wanted to add to League of Legends, which from what I hear, Riot had two options for what they could add. They could add a new Doran's item, or they could add new boots. Players voted. Um, and then it ended up being boots. That is the Ionian boots of lucidity, the cooldown reduction boots that came from this event. If you're curious about what the other item was, I believe it was a Doran's item that was meant to be for spellcasters. I think Guardsman Bob at one point said on his stream that it was a Doran's item for spell vamp. So we can assume it had stats that are, you know, plus 400 health or whatever, like many of the other Doran's items, maybe plus some AP, um, but it had spell vamp as a Doran's item, which could be pretty interesting. Uh, Guardsman Bob said that he didn't really like the spell vamp mechanic, so he ended up voting for the Boots of Lucidity, which gave the 10% cooldown reduction, and that's what we have in game nowadays. This was a pretty interesting event, though, because it, it kind of got Guardsman Bob on the map. A lot of the other players that were in this event were similar to him, where they were streamers or they were high, high-ish rated players, albeit not pros, not the best in the world. And he, seeing him go off with all these other players that were relatively high rated and pretty dang good, he was able to really make a make a point uh, standing out as, as a big, exciting player that a lot of people then started following his stream afterwards. And then people that, that then started to follow his stream, eventually that encouraged him to really try and stream full time, monetizing everything and, and making it his full time job, which really solidified him as a league's first full time streamer that was not just a pro player, doing streaming on the side. I do want to emphasize he was still a very good player. I keep on mentioning he's not a pro because he was kind of this exciting figurehead in streaming that paved the way for a lot of professional league streamers of the future, but he was still very good and people followed him and respected his opinion when he gave it on terms of, you know, various things that would occur in game. If, if people were wondering about, um, you know, some new champion build or they wanted to ask him what he thought of various patch notes, that kind of stuff, people would go to him and they would respect his opinion, paying attention to what he said, and they would pay attention to the various champions he played and the builds that he used, one of which was a very interesting one. He, st he was the one, I think, maybe the first player who started taking Warwick down the lane. This was significant because Warwick, I mean, he was a jungler through and through. He had never been played in lane before, and if anything, jungle was known for taking champions that were meant to go top lane and kind of stealing them for the jungle. Whenever a new champion would come out like Jarvan or Shivana, who was meant to go down top lane, a lot of junglers would just say, no, we're going to jungle him. Uh, you know, Jarvan, even though he has this flag and dragon, all this stuff that can be used to 1v1 people and poke him down in laning phase, he was played top lane for a little bit, but it wasn't long before junglers just started saying, no, his flag and drag is so good. We're going to use him to jungle. Same deal with Shivana, same deal with Elise, same deal with Skarner, same deal with Nidalee nowadays, same deal with uh, Rengar, and a lot of different characters. I mean, you, you could really list them off for a while. There's probably about 20 champions or so that jungle kind of co-opted from top lane, and and it was weird that this was the opposite effect happening. This was a jungler who was solidified as a jungler through and through that was now being played top lane. The reason it worked though was because Warwick, he was really good in one versus one situations. He was not just a top laner, but he was a mid laner too. People were taking him mid lane against mages. Like, you know, what, what is this supposed to do? Well, it's a really interesting build. What you would do is you would go Doran's ring and then go for like maybe some AP, but namely tank items because you were trying 
trying to just use your Q to harass people down and out sustain them in lane. You would just consistently max Q, consistently use it on opponents to harass them down. Every Q that you did would actually deal a fair amount of damage to your opponent. It would also heal you up a considerable amount and it would allow you to continuously trade against people to a point where you could bully them out of lane and then start, you know, start CSing, out CS your opponent, get a gold lead that way and then just crush them. This was really interesting. I mean, it was a pretty revolutionary idea because this was also one of the instances where you weren't really using a champion to necessarily go for kills. Warwick could still set up really nicely for his jungler. And if an opponent was an idiot or something, you could take Ignite and, you know, use your ultimate and Q if they allowed themselves to get too low to finish him off. But this was a really cool strategy that, again, Guardsman Bob was the one that really made it famous. He kind of pioneered it. And eventually you did see Warwick being taken down top lane and mid lane in solo Q, which that's what we're going to try and do today. We are going to see if we can still play Warwick in a solo lane, which I am very excited about. This is another one of these builds and stuff that I've been talking about recently, which has a lot of history and means quite a bit to me. And I don't know if it's still possible to make it work, but I have seen, I, I've seen that it has enough people still trying to play it that it's kind of popular on OPGG. It's not very highly rated. It's currently ranked as the third worst champion in top lane out of the 53 champions that can go top. But East, enough people are trying it that it might still be something. I don't know. So we'll see if we can make it work today. This is the rune set that we're going to be running. We're going to make sure that we take Grasp of the Undying because I think with Grasp and then maybe if we can go Sheen into Frozen Mallet or something, we might be able to get some pretty solid cues off that could allow us to still play this play style in the way that it was played before where you're really trying to poke down your opponent by consistently queuing them and then eventually just start zoning them from CS. Beyond that, we're going to go pretty much just tanky stuff because at the end of the day, this is going to turn into a tank build in the mid and late game, but um, I'm excited. This might still have some lane presence. We'll see. Looks like we're up against a Malphi top lane, which I am very excited about. This should be like fairly easy. We might be able to have legitimate pressure against him, but we'll see. Let's see if Warwick can still work top lane. Lust Gates! All right, first Warwick Q in lane in years. Hey, that's actually pretty solid damage. Huh. My autos deal a lot, don't they? Is that the passive? Warwick got like a new passive where I don't think it heals anymore, just like heals off of um, auto attacks. But it gives that, that bonus thingy now, right? Malphite ended up going for a pretty aggro build himself, taking the Comet as well as some inspiration. He's going for, I think he's going for harass and everything. Can we just beat him? Eh, we can out-trade him a little bit, but he is pretty good at getting away. Oh, no. Oh, come on. Oh, Kha'Zix. Help me, help me, help me, help me. I healed, I healed. Oh, yes. Let's go. Let's go. Malphite flashed for that and everything too, didn't he? Oh, that is beautiful. That is actually beautiful. He saw me. Ah, oh, shoot. He saw me. He saw me. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. We still have a really solid start here, though. Oh, this is exciting, man. I'm excited. One problem I'm pretty confident that Warwick top lane has is he doesn't have a lot of sustain. Excuse me, not sustain. He doesn't have a lot of uh, wave clear. So we are going to go for the time at, time at, TM at, however you say it. It doesn't matter how you say it. You guys make fun of me however I say everything. Wow, those cues. Those are... I don't know, maybe maybe I'm misremembering, but I feel like those are probably about as much damage as, as old Warwick top lane did. I mean, maybe even more so. I wanna go aggro here, but he is under tower. I have to be careful. Like, look at that. Look at that damage. That was one Q plus one auto, and it dealt so much damage to him. We're zoning him pretty hard. We're at 39 CS, and he's at 25. This, this, this feels legit, dude. I mean, I, I say that about a lot of different champions we've been playing recently, but this feels legit. Here we go. Ah, uh, I was kind of hoping he would just ult immediately and then I could follow him with the Q. We do get the ulti out of him though, which is obviously pretty solid. And now we can go ahead and uh, let this wave push in and freeze a little bit. You know, one thing I got to say about Warwick top lane is he does feel really clunky. Oh wait, can I kill him? 
Wow, we can. We can just straight up kill him. I'm I'm in shock right now. Maybe Malphite is not considered that good of a top laner at the moment. That's certainly a possibility, but we are doing a lot better than I initially anticipated. One thing I do have to say about Warwick top lane is he feels kind of clunky because if you look at like my auto attacks here, um, I have really low attack speed unless I'm attacking a minion that's under 30 health or under 50% health. Um, then my attack speed ramps up because that's like how Warwick works now, I think, but... It's, it's really weird, and it does feel a little clunky, but that's the only bad thing about this. I feel like we're doing really well. 84 CS to 48! Malphite's trying to get a little bit more lane presence by spamming his Q on me, and it is getting me kind of low, but I am able to just keep queuing minions, even if he's not running in range for me to queue him, and that's healing me up to a point where I think I gotta be careful about mana, but other than that, I'm doing pretty well. Uh-oh. What am I doing? I didn't realize I had no minions. I also saw Kha'Zix here, and I was kind of thinking I should be a little more aggro, but... Okay, I'm an idiot. I forgot. I'm just an idiot. Oh, here we go. Oh, look at that... Look at that harass, man. That is... That is legit. That is... That is... Legit. Nope, no, no. Okay, okay. I messed everything up there, but it's okay because I'm a god. No, I'm not. I'm awful. Oh, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Oh, yeah. And we still have that ganking power, too, to show up to other lanes. This, you know, I think maybe playing um, playing some of the champions that I'm playing might help me a little bit with my lack of roaming and lack of map awareness because I kind of have to help out teammates sometimes. Malphite's playing passively enough that we're not really able to get a kill on him anymore. He's not really doing much to allow me to go aggro. And the only time he does is when he has help, like, like Hecarim coming top lane. Shoot, I should have warded. He cleared a ward I just placed, didn't he? Oops. Even so, 20 minute mark. We're only three kills behind in total. And I've been doing a pretty dang good job top lane. 50 CS ahead of Malphite. I mean, that that is, that is something else. But let's go ahead, focus up, make sure we win this game. Because they're one drink away from the Dragon Soul. Can we? Oh. That was good. Oh, that was good. But then it was bad because this stupid Hecarim is bailing out his team. He is carrying them, isn't he? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, finally, we get the gank. Get the easy kill. Thank you, Anivia, for coming top lane. I hope you're able to do a lot with that. And we can get another kill there, too. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun right now, and we're doing pretty dang well. I have my ultimate, too. We need to keep on making sure that we make things happen, because Hecarim is just going off this match. Oh! No! Ah, their team is doing a lot better than ours, I think, in terms of being useful and, and helping each other out. If we can play with more team play, though, I think we have this. Don't let them take that for free. Do not. We gave them a dragon soul without contesting any of the drakes. That, that, if... <laughs> well, let's see. Can Warwick top lane carry against an earth dragon soul? Well, uh, we're about to find out. Oh, I was trying to save you, Tristana. Oh, shoot. This game is getting really frustrating because it feels like we're doing well. You know, it feels like we're kind of doing almost what we're supposed to, but the enemy team is just way more coordinated. It's not even like they're better mechanically, but they're much better as playing at playing as a team. But there we go. We get a couple of kills. It only ends up being a two for two, but hey, that might be kind of good considering we are against the Earth Drake Soul. I'm dead. Maybe not. Oh, come on. No, if I got the Q off. Are we gonna give an Elder Drake soul for free as well? Yep, we are. Holy moly, can we just stop giving up objectives for free? I know bot lane lost, but that doesn't mean we should just like give up everything. You know, that game was extraordinarily frustrating, but I think that was just because our teammates like didn't try. Like if we have a jungle who tries to not give up everything for free, or a bot lane that doesn't lose super hard and give up every Drake, 
I think this could work. Let's try that one more time. Game two here. We're up against a Kale now. I don't think this is going to go nearly as well, but we'll see. Let's go. Uh-oh. Maybe not uh-oh. Yeah, hey, that's actually a pretty good start. Eh, it could be it could be better, it could be worse. Dude, what is this? I need to recall. I have to recall and go top lane. <laughs> I could have played that so much better. That was so sloppy. But we do get a flash out of her, which is pretty solid. Uh, maybe I should have even tried to flash after. I don't know. Uh, we'll go ahead and just try and freeze this wave if we can. Force a TP out of her now. There we go. Okay, I... I Oh, I messed that up. I messed that up. But we do get the kill. That That is pretty huge. And now we can hopefully start getting some lane control. All right. This game is going a lot better than last game did, even with that weird level one. And even with last game being pretty dang good. Maybe Warwick top lane is legit. I have a little bit of a level advantage. So I'm going to get level six first. No. Oh, there's like a thingy too I can see. Or there's like a range thingy that shows up and shows if I'm in range. Shoot. I could have killed her before she got six. I could have autoed. Okay, we got an ulti out of her that we didn't deserve to get. <laughs> Yasuo players are so easy to play against. I love them. We are now at about nine minutes in, closing in on the 10 minute mark, and we are 27 CS to 62, more than doubling this lady's CS. We are killing her. Is that it? No! Okay, we get the kill. We have to use the flash to do it, but we will live with plenty of health. And we can also set up a wave freeze here, maybe. Oh, dude! Warwick is amazing! He's actually amazing! 3 0 now, 91 CS to 48. Kale is 0 2 0. And I mean, I think with this, this might be a game that we just win. We have a Tarek Yi combo, and they did not do anything to shut it down. Our team is even <laughs> taking an in him, and we're 12 minutes in. These two games are obviously pretty stark in their contrast. One game, we had a frustrating team that did not do a good job of paying attention to some pretty basic things that you need to pay attention to in League of Legends, like um, the dragon. Uh, which is a really important objective since this preseason update. And compare that to this game, we obviously have a much better team who looks like bot lane was able to win two versus two and everything. And and we were still um, we were still able to have a, a solid solid team with the Tarek Master Yi combo that was able to go off. And oh boy, I'm in trouble. But even with all that being said, we win five one zero. I mean, the game's not quite over yet, but this. We didn't really have... He didn't gank top lane. We didn't get Tarek help. This game, we kind of went off. Oh. Uh-oh. Okay, hang on. I changed my mind. I changed my mind. I changed my mind. I don't want to do this. Oh, that was... A, can I not go through the wall? Oops. Okay, I messed that up. I think the thing that surprises me more than anything about this build, though, is that this still feels exactly like Warwick in lane fell before. I mean, I played a lot of Warwick mid lane and Warwick top lane way back when uh, in Season 1, and maybe that was also into Season 2. I forget quite when that stopped being a thing, but I played it a lot myself back in the day, and... and this still feels the exact same way that it did before. There definitely is some quirkiness in the laning phase with this auto attack. Uh, the auto attack speed on low health minions, as well as the ability to kind of move fast when people in other lanes are getting low health. I mean, it's kind of weird that that stuff, and it it definitely feels like you're not playing someone who's meant to be a um, who's meant to be a laner. Uh, it feels like you're supposed to be a jungler. But that being said. I mean, this is this this brought back a lot of fun old memories. And can we win this game right now? Oh, I might want to be careful about how deep I go. 
And we might want to back off here, I guess. But that being said, I think it's safe to say that Warwick top lane is still 100% legitimate. This is still something you can do. Just take him top lane, see if you can use that Q to get lane pressure the same way you always did. And then, you know, maybe go for some, uh, maybe just focus a little bit on the CS differential and zoning your opponent rather than just straight up going for kills. Oh, is this where we win? Okay, I'm messing up a little bit here. Going a little too aggro without my team, but they are all here now, and I still am alive. Give me that ulti. And I'm going to be slowed and... Oh! Oh, we got him! We got him! There we go! Good game. Well played. Oh, that was really fun. 6, 2, and 4 is our final score. And hell, you know, we maybe got carried by our jungle mid lane combo this game. But hey, we got we got screwed by, by our jungle mid lane combo last game. But either way, I hope you guys all enjoyed watching this episode of Does X Still Work in League of Legends? And I had a lot of fun making it. I will see you all in the next episode. But until then, thank you very much for watching. Good luck in solo queue. And have a wonderful day.